So I, I saw this documentary about crows. And I mean, if you if you can get pigeons doing that, you, the crows, they actually have um, these tools. Using, they were doing, they were using tools. Yeah. I saw this documentary. Yeah. And it was really deep cognitive thinking. Like crows are up there with one of the most intelligent beings on the planet. And they also, the guys were, we, they put masks on, like Halloween masks that look like, um, Nixon or something, uh-huh. and then they they did mean things to the crows, and then um, later on they wanted to discover if the intelligence or the identification of the mean guy with the mask, because they they crows recognize people's faces, yeah, and so they wanted to know if the children of the crows would also recognize the same guy with the mask, mm-hmm. and they and they did. That's, oh wow, that's funny. So it's like how. What kind of, like, how does one crow communicate to another the vision of the guy with the mask to their children? Yeah, in, uh, in uh, Rupert Sheldrake's theory about morphic genetic resonance is that since that one crow got that information and it kind of like uploads it to the cloud of crows, like external information, so then they could access it. Basically, that's what it is. He goes into more detail about it, and um, but that's his kind of like theory behind that. Uh, but hey, did you see the? Um, I think it was on Minds. It was it was a clip. Um, I don't know if you saw it. It was like the guy. He hooked up. He 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 rigged up a lie detector test to attach to the leaves of a plant, so that it like you know he could figure that out. Then, then he like he took a, a match and burned a leaf, and then figured out that you know the plant reacted on the light detector test. Then he was like, "Okay, I'm just I'm just gonna imagine burning the plant." So all he oh. did was look at the plant and imagine lighting it on fire, and it reacted the exact same way. Wow! It's uh, people's thoughts affect plants like like you wouldn't believe. But I, I don't know if this is in relation. This this is in relation to anything else. But you're talking about looking at the back of someone's head, my, and I, I don't know if this has anything to do with anything. But it popped in my mind. My 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 half sister's husband, years and years ago when I was little, and I had a deck of cards, and you know, being little, I think well maybe maybe there was some trick to it, and I didn't see it because I was only like six years old or seven. But it would. I, I don't remember there being any trick to it. I took a card off the deck. And I put it underneath. He just put his hand over the card. His card was upside down, and then he would tell me what the card was. There was no trick to it. Like I was holding the card in my hand, and I pulled another card from the deck, put it underneath his hand, and he would say three of hearts. And I flip it over to three of hearts. He could see through, like he could feel through the card and tell me what it was. So there's some, there's like, there's some awareness or some. Like you, like you don't really, you see more not with your eyes, but we haven't figured how to do that with our minds yet. Mm-hmm. You know, so like, if we're so um, like centric in our bodies that we we think we'll, we're looking out in one direction, but your, your consciousness sees everything all around in all directions, including like the back of your head. Like you don't.